top focus this evening, Tamil Nadu political pot boiler simmers. After Tamil Nadu Governor Arun Ravi's midnight U-turn on minister dismissal decision, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Stalin held a high-level meeting. Post the meeting, Stalin wrote a letter to the governor in which he stated, and I quote, Minister Senthil Balaji will continue to stay as a minister in the cabinet without a portfolio. The letter further states, according to the Indian constitution, the governor's office does not have the right to take decisions and pass orders on such matters. The order passed in a violation of the Indian constitution. Remember, in an unprecedented move, Governor Ravi had dismissed jailed Minister Senthil Balaji. Governor reversed his decision, though, within a few hours, and sources suggest he is taking legal opinion from the Attorney General. Political war over Governor's decision and subsequent U-turn has exploded. DMK has lashed out at Arun Ravi, saying he is not in knowledge about the roles as a Governor and is openly acting against Constitution. The BJP, though, has defended the governor, terming his decision to sack Senthil Balaji as morally correct. So we are not getting into it. The whole of Tamil Nadu knows Mr. Senthil Balaji is a corrupt minister. The whole of Tamil Nadu knows he continuing in the cabinet is definitely not the right thing. The whole of Tamil Nadu expects the chief minister of Tamil Nadu to remove Mr. Senthil Balaji from the cabinet. It is the bounden duty of Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu to keep his cabinet neat and clean, which is not doing it. So now the question of whether the governor has got powers or no powers, we don't want to get into that. Since the governor has chosen to go to the Attorney General and take his opinion and get back to us, so BJP Tamil Nadu, we choose to reserve our comment on this particular issue. So what we are trying to do is bringing out what Mr. M.K. Stalinji has spoken at different points of time and what Supreme Court has given judgments at different points of time. You know, we're given to understand that uh, the governor has taken an absolute U-turn on what he uh, told yesterday night. Uh, so, uh, you know, for the time being, he's uh, uh, put the dismissal order on hold, uh, you know, as far as Sandil Balaji's portfolio is concerned. What would have made the governor take this U-turn? Because uh, this is a very huge and, uh, you know, uh, unusual step. See, yesterday, uh, even uh, the uh, dismissal was unusual, was unconstitutional, was against the con a crime against the constitution and there was a large pushback across the country and thanks to all the uh, media channels which have uh, covered it extensively the bjp and the rss would have understood the mood of the nation how they are not going to tolerate any kind of nonsense like this and what this has proved again is this that the bjp and the rss is afraid of public opinion but now the question is should this governor not be sacked? We said he acted in a clownish way. Exactly that has been proved. Uh, we're also given to understand that the governor is uh, going to take opinions from the attorney general. So isn't it something that he should have done earlier before putting out an order that he's dismissing Sandil Balaji, taking legal opinions, not after the order came out? Uh, see, it's a waste of time. Uh, uh, attorney general, the top law officer of this country, I don't think he's going to say the governor has the power to dismiss uh, any minister. The governor's action is exposing the incompetence of M.K. Stalin every day. In his first letter, he has cited Sandil Balaji cannot continue on moral turpitude, which means that he has a history of abusing his power. M.K. Stalin failed on his duty, having taken oath, saying that he will protect uh, and he will act according to the law and constitution, he will protect the interest of the people. Having failed so, the subsequent actions of the governor proves and exposes incompetence of Stalin every day. However, this has gone to the judiciary. Now, the DMK will hit the judiciary. They will file, try to file a case against the governor. Uh, this will become a judicial uh, process. To take this conversation further, I'm being uh, joined by the guests on our show, Advocate A. Kumarugaru, who is the BJP spokesperson. Tamil Nadu, also Dr. Syed Hafiz, spokesperson of the DMK, and Sanjay Hegde, senior advocate. Good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for taking the time out. Um, but let me begin by asking Sanjay this. The matter, of course, is bound to go to court. Will it stand the scrutiny of law in your opinion? Can you break that down for us? I don't know who's going to court. There are several situations possible. Right now, I believe that the uh, Tamil Nadu government has decided to ignore both both letters as having had no legal effect and uh, to my mind that is the correct stance to take because we are a parliamentary democracy the 
governor is the head of the state. The president is the head of the state as far as the country is concerned. They only reign. They do not rule. All actions which are taken in their name are only after cabinet advice. Without cabinet advice, the governor cannot dismiss possibly even a gardener on the lawns of Raj Bhavan. So there is nothing that they do in their individual capacity. Because if we were to rule otherwise, that governors could go about dismissing individual ministers and chief ministers, then there would be constitutional chaos, as very nearly happened in this country once. Uh, President uh, Zail Singh wanted to dismiss uh, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi uh, uh, during the days of Bofors and when, they, when the two of them were get, not getting along. But thankfully, that situation was averted. The Supreme Court has, way back in, in the 1970s, ruled in a seven-judge judgment in the Samshayasan's case that we are a parliamentary democracy. Governors have very little discretion in very few circumstances. And, they certainly, and that discretion certainly does not uh, extend to dismissing individual ministers. Right, Mr. Hegne, as you make that uh, viewpoint, I'm going to come back to you as we discuss this further. But let me go across to Syed Hafiz. Syed, what do you think prompted the U-turn? See, uh, we need to understand, as uh, Mr. Hegde said, that we are a parliamentary de democracy. And these are all conventions. These governors, presidents, they are all conventions in a parliamentary democracy. Because we have just uh, taken the system from the British, where prince and then the democracy was working. But here, it is completely a democratic system. The governor is a apolitical constitutional head. I quote, unquote, he's an apolitical constitutional head. But here, unfortunately, in Tamil Nadu, the governor is behaving like a political constitutional head who is working at the behest of his Delhi masters who wants the, the, the minister to be sacked. See, uh, we don't want moral science classes from the BJP. If that is the case, then you should rid your cabinet, for union cabinet of all the ministers who have pending cases against them. You don't do that in your own government, but you come and advise a governor being a nominee of the central government. He advises us on moral things and how a minister should conduct himself, or if he has cases, he has to be uh, taken out of the government. Now, coming to the point, the BJP, the center is all about... Uh, abolishing and eradicating the English and the colonial system, the first thing they should do is to sack the governor system and let the democracy prevail in the country. You cannot, a nominee cannot decide what the state government has to do unless and until if it is, it is exceeding the constitutional power. The pleasure which they are talking about, the pleasure of the governor in this case, means the pleasure of the chief minister. There are a lot of Supreme Court judgments which say it is the pleasure of the chief minister, it is the will of the chief minister, which indirectly means the pleasure of the governor when it comes to sacking or appointing the minister. So that point needs to be clear. In Shamshir Singh versus uh, Punjab, the seven, uh, seven judge uh, benches very clearly, categorically said that the elected government, which is the chief minister, is superior over the nominee by the center. He cannot do anything against the advice of the Council of Ministers. This is a very clear stand. That is what Constitution says. That is what uh, the legal framework is. Even Ambedkar has said a lot of things about the role of the governor. Now, being this as a situation, the governor has a personal vendetta to target this government in terms of corruption, and he is choosing Sandil Balaji as a target. That is what every BJP person in Tamil Nadu wants to do. The legal standpoint is, unless and until any Anybody who is convicted, you cannot force him to resign a ministership or an MLA which he has won because of the people's mandate. So that is where the pleasure of the governor comes. One cannot be a convict and enjoy the pleasure of governor. That is the that is the bottom line of the constitutional pressure. And you know this doctrine of pleasure and needs to be abolished. That is what Munchi Committee has also said. In this particular case, he is still an accused. There is no charge sheet that is being framed on Sindhil Balaji by the ED. Why is the governor in hurry to take him off? He, no, his whole letter is contradictory. At first point, he says he doesn't want 
a, a, a minister who is under the custody to be a minister without portfolio. And in the second part of the letter, he says that, you know, he will, he will, he will, uh, you know, he will alter or interrupt the investigation. How can a person who is in the judicial custody interrupt the investigation? That is practically impossible. Then you mean you're undermining the power of the judiciary and the judicial custody. We respect judiciary and judicial custody. Nobody in judicial custody will have the power to interrupt the investigation. Third point, if tomorrow he gets the bail, if he gets a bail after this 15 days period, which has been extended by the judicial remand, will uh, governor come in, uh, conduct another event to sermonize him as the, as, the, as the minister. So these are all unwanted things. The role of the governor, which is failing to do so, he is being invited for a lot of convocation. He is not doing so, but he is involving himself <coughs> in the politics which the BJP wants him to do, which the RSS and the right wing wants him to do. This is unconstitutional. Right, Sayad. Let me take uh, that point across to Kumar Garu. Kumar Garu, this is of course not the first time that uh, attack has been leveled against the BJP. If you just take two points from that, saying that the governor, governor is behaving on the behest of a Delhi master. Also, Syed going on to say it, that the BJP has no personal vendetta. What is the BJP's viewpoint on that? Well, let my friend um, um, Syed explain. Um, how does uh, how did the governor get the power in 2018 to remove a minister or dismiss the minister? How the same governor did not get the power in 2023? I don't know. Same Mr. Stalin has said in on 1st of September 2018, in the government of AIDMK, um, under the um, uh, chief ministership of Mr. Yadapati Pandichami, he said, Mr. Yadapati Pandichami, please remove one minister who is the Vijay Bhaskar, health minister, immediately, or ask him to resign. If not, we will go and complain to the governor. Governor should dismiss him. The statement given by Mr. Stalin. The same uh, Mr. Stalin is saying now he doesn't have power. I am talking about factual, the legal aspect is, uh, that is separate. I am coming to that next. But why, why DMK is saying now you have no power when the, the same party said governor has got all the power to dismiss him? The two stand. Second, legally, legally I say, can you show one case like this where um, I am great respect to um, uh, Mr. Santosh Ekdem? Can you show one example like this where a minister said through an affidavit before the High Court? saying, I have received money for the post of conductor and driver and the same money I am willing to give back to the um, victims and victims are ready to accept it. If they accept, why can't you cost the, the entire charge it? That is the stand taken by Mr. Sandil Balaji before the High Court and he has filed an affidavit. That judge accepted that, then the, amount, the entire case was compounded. One of the victims who was cheated by Mr. Sandil Balaji by the promise he made in the court that he would repay the money, which he did not do. And that made the victim to approach the Supreme Court. He went, in, uh, he went to the Supreme Court asking the judge, please ask Mr. Sandil Balaji to settle the amount as he promised. Then the Honorable Judge, Mr. Ramasubramani, went into the matter and said, what is happening in Tamil Nadu? A minister who has, who has the courage to come to the court and say, I have received money. I have received bribe, not money. I have received bribe for the post of conductor and driver. I am, I am willing to give it back. Where is the question of uh, Prevention of Corruption Act? Then he slammed the government and directed the government agency to include PC Act and file the charge sheet within two months. See, governor says he doesn't, as my, my friend says, DMK friend said, no, he doesn't say for all the ministers. Even I don't welcome it. When the person is facing a charges, I don't say, I don't ask him to resign. Uh, governor is asking a person who has given an affidavit before the court saying that I have admitted my guilt, I have taken money and I am ready to give it back. In such scenario, keeping him as a minister will definitely tamper the witnesses and evidences and that too he should have resigned long back. He has requested the uh, chief minister to remove him. Chief minister did not budge. So he had no other alternative to dismiss. Whether he has got power under 164 or not, that's a questionable, the debatable point. I know I don't want to go into that. It's up to the governor to prove it. Right. And putting it on hold, the reason behind that, he has to explain. Governor office has to explain. I, I can't be a spokesperson for a governor. But whether he has got the power or not, it's a large, larger question. It's a gray area and it has to be definitely debated. But our uh, judgment 1979, again, Mr. Right. Seven, seven five judges bench said, when governor is the administrative head, whoever takes money, whoever is paid from public exchequer, governor has got all the power to question them 
take action against them, dismiss them, appoint them, all powers he gets. That is the law. Even if, if you are Mr. Um, senior advocate is not convinced about that, that's a questionable, debatable point. That is a different issue. But don't say Mr. Um, Governor is taking only against all the people. No, he is taking action only against the corrupt person, corrupt minister. He says it is biased. Then why did Mr. Raja resign? Why did Mr. Amit Shah resign? Why did Mr. Adwani resign after the charges are made? He should have stepped down. He did not. We requested Mr. Stalin to take action. He did not do. Kumar Garu, I have the to uh, unfortunately interject you there. But of course, the bigger question is, um, you know, is it high time to end the grey area? But uh, that is probably a discussion for another time. But I want to thank all the three of you for joining us here on News at 7 and sharing with us your perspective. But we leave it at that for the moment.